So what I think I have here are a variety of materials that can be used and a variety of ways in which to use those materials. A lot of this is, one of the exciting things about this is it's not a well-known or well-established way of making images. It allows you a lot of freedom to try stuff, um, and that's the exciting part of it. Um, I tried lots of stuff that didn't work, but you learn by making mistakes, right? Um, I'm still here. I didn't blow up or anything. So, <laughs> um, so <clears throat> I started working on silk. I've become enamored of silk. I work on silk a lot. This is a sheet of silk. And as you can see, that it accepts the polymer very nicely. Um, the polymer is a substance that allows the, the, the foils to adhere. Um, they form a new, very, they bond and form a very new complicated molecule that can't be taken apart. So this is not like painting on top of. It is now being absorbed in all of these cases into the paper structure itself. Um, in that sense, it's a little bit different than painting or other kinds of things. The other factor that you see here is the pencil drawing. It turns out that graphite adheres to foil or to, to the polymer, um, but the foil will not foil on top of it. So you have a really cool thing to work with here. So the black marks are the graphite. The colors and so on up in here are the foil. The foil is not covering the graphite because it won't adhere, but the graphite is still there. It is embedded in the silk behind the foil. Uh, there are a number of examples around here where that graphite transfer works really well. And that is similar to using Xerox copies of a drawing or anything. And we'll talk about that. So if you have a photograph that you would like to use, and that's a good way to start, actually, because the image is all set for you, uh, we will be able to use that to create a foil work. Um, so, and this also, I also, um, I studied intermediate arts while I was at school, and that's performance and, inter uh, uh, and installations and all of that. So my idea eventually is to have a forest of these in a room that when people walk through them, they will move. Your body will activate this image and you will not see something imprisoned on a wall. You will be in the environment created by the picture. So these, this is an area I've gotten quite interested in. We'll see another one over there. Um, so that's on silk and that's big. Now the surface you're printing on is at most so when we get to the tree, <laughs> you can see what a problem that is. Um, these images were made from um, an engraving uh, or an intaglio, but it's on a plastic plate, not a copper plate. And so these black lines were engraved in the way you would do if you were going to do an intaglio print. And it was printed twice, overlaid. Um, I would engrave the plate on both sides so that I could have this facing and this facing. So we have the two images coming together and they create a figure in the middle. And they are double planted, uh, printed. So you look here, you can see two different uh, plate marks. One here and one here. Um, so this is, these images are made with um, uh, with images cut in uh, plaster, um, plastic, same here. Over here, this was made when the river was flooding the University of Iowa in what, 2008? Is that, it interrupted our mural too, didn't it? Um, I think. No, um, we were done before that. Oh, that was because of asbestos in the walls. They took the building <laughs> yes. down. <laughs> yes, it wasn't water, it was asbestos. Okay. Uh, so. We were doing a summer workshop in the art department and the river was spreading higher and higher and higher and it was going down Riverside Drive and we're all foiling and looking out the window. And finally they said, you got to get out of here in half an hour. <laughs> so 
we had to pick up the whole studio and our artwork and everything else and flee the art building. So this was made during that time, and it kind of, to me, resembles <laughs> the chaos and the glitter of water and blah, 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 blah. There are two pieces of paper used here. Um, there is a regular flat white print paper, but on top, if you look closely, some of the texture in here comes because there is another uh, textured paper. It was uh, uh, an, a very delicate Asian paper that had uh, a texture in it. So the texture comes from the paper I'm working on. And then these are just a multitude of different colors of foil that have been touched on top of that. So it's two layers of paper and then foiling. Um, this one also has a, um, this is a Xerox copy of a map. Um, this is also a Xerox copy of a map blown up and manipulated to look more like a drawing. Um, this is a stencil. A lot of this work will be done using stencils so that I was able to put the shiny glue behind this figure um, and create the outline. Um, this is somewhat personal too. There's a face here as you can see and that was done uh, I think as a monoprint um, before any of the rest of this stuff went on top of the picture. Um, this is the map for how you get from my uh, where I grew up in Northfield, Minnesota to Ontario to um, all the way up to Ontario where we would go and spend the summer and my father would fish and all that stuff. So it's kind of a memory piece. Um, it, it's, um, but you don't need to know that. <laughs> um, but this, just to let you know, there are all sorts of ways to use the things in your world to talk about it, to People who can also just enjoy it as a picture, they don't need to know the story behind it. Um, this is an intaglio, also uh, made in the print workshop, um, and then it just simply has a lot of different foils added to it, so it's a fairly simple one. You can see the plate marks, uh, and the black lines are engraved um, and printed, and then foiled on top. But I was using transparent or translucent foils. Obviously, if I used opaque foils, you wouldn't see the black lines. So you'll see the range of foils that are available. This is a color photograph. Um, and I did nothing to it. It turns out that color photographs will foil. There's some polymer in the chemistry there. Um, these are the massive rocks along the shore of Lake Superior on one of our trips to Ontario. And, um, and looking at the photographs, I got intrigued with what looks like a portal to, a, to I don't know where. Um, and so I have foiled, and when you look at this uh, closely, you can see where I have added some transparent foils to increase the drama here. And then this is an iridescent foil to make the portal to whatever. <laughs> You will see that we have various kinds of foils. We have, we have flat, opaque foils. We have uh, foils that are shiny. We have foils that refract light. We have foils that reflect light. We have foils that are holograms. Uh, the palette of foils is, is unbelievable, and you'll get carried away. <laughs> This is a piece of silk again, and these were at once um, green pieces of beautiful grass. Um, they're adhered to the silk, and uh, most of the stems have come off, but the, the, um, some of it is still there, and then I've added a gold thread. Um, so this is silk and gold shiny foil and some goop and um, live plants. Uh, this is also on a piece of linen, and this image is repeated over there in that larger one. This was a photograph, and I worked with um, another fellow artist who is very good digitally, and so we took this photograph, we made it black and white, uh, we sized it and proportioned it, and I then tried printing it on this piece of linen. Over there, it's a, a much larger image, and we had to, she had to digitally prepare, I think there are four different um, segments of that image, which then got put together kind of like a puzzle um, 
on top of the backing, which is a fabric and has a uh, has an application of foil. So that took us through several different steps to get there. This one we talked about a little bit earlier. The back here is a mirror and is reflected, and it is reflecting what is in front of it. And what is in front of it is a piece of plastic that was used as a palette. As you can see, it's got real paint on there. And then this is a photograph that had been Xeroxed and then made um, and then foiled. But first it had to be inverted because I didn't want the face to be that color. I uh, wanted the face to be a, a clear color. So the image had to be inverted and then it was foiled, and then the foil was adhered to the front of the plastic. If, if I had pursued this, I was going to talk to someone who could find a way to light it so that the reflective surface was more visible. It's not quite visible, but it is if you hold it in a certain light. So that was the direction I was going to go into and didn't. Um, here we are with this leaf pattern again. These are a bunch of stencils, and here's your graphite. And you can see that some of these foils cover the graphite up and some of them don't. Um, the whole paper has been primed and it has been foiled with an opaque white and then with stencils I have repeated this image all the way across there and included the drawing. This doesn't have any foil on it but it is an example of how big you can get. Um, I would have foiled this in a different situation. This was made in a project called Eight to Create, uh, Champaign, Illinois. Um, eight artists were chosen to work for eight hours in public and then to have a gathering afterwards. Um, so I began this drawing in the morning. Uh, about halfway through, I had the students help me take it off the wall. We completely covered it with polymer. I and then put silk on top of that, and then we put it back up on the wall, and I continued to draw. So the graphite is both on this backing paper and on top of the silk, which is on top of the graphite drawing. And it allowed me to manipulate the lights and darks in a very subtle kind of way. And it was big, which I got more and more interested in, as you see when we go around the corner. <laughs> this is... Um, this is done on an actual piece of paper, and I have a piece of paper up there on the table. Um, I always go through the Blick paper drawers, all that imported beautiful paper. Well, guess what? Some of it foils. Um, and so I foiled it and then used this commercial gold paper as a backing. But this is here because the, the paper I was using actually foiled, and that was kind of cool. And here is a, an example of a piece of plastic that I also foiled with the same image. Plastic took it. This is a live leaf. Um, I did a series of eight or nine of these. These are the hosta leaves from my garden um, in the spring. And hostas, as you know, have beautiful big stalks with flowers on them. They have beautiful big green leaves and everything. Well, after the winter, the leaves were still viable. They had not disintegrated. They hadn't fallen apart. They weren't mush. So I brought them in and revitalized them and did a whole series of these plants. And to me, it was so interesting because it was such a cycle of growth, flourishing, um, death, and regeneration. And we're using polymers. Um, which are organic, we have polymer in us. And so for me, this was kind of a cyclical thing. Um, we have two intaglios. This is an intaglio my father made. Um, and I have received all of his studio and a lot of works in progress and unfinished works and so on. So, so I've sort of been working with him. <laughs> um, so it's an intaglio. And then on top of it are these raised lines here are Elmer's glue. You just glue the glue, 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 Elmer's glue and let it dry in a bump. It will foil. So we have Elmer's glue. Um, it, some of it follows the lines that my father had put in the print. Some of them don't. And um, 
he titled it Toymaker, which I also foiled. I subsequently found another version of this much later was much more elaborate. He got a headdress and, uh, you know, obviously he went on making that image. So this is a combination with intaglio printmaking, as is this one. Um, this is another work of his, an unfinished work. These tree images are images that I was using, and they come strictly from uh, digital Xerox copies of uh, black and white drawings. Um, and so part of this picture comes from him long ago. Part of this picture comes from me now working together with him, which I kind of enjoyed thinking about. <laughs> um, we talked briefly about this one that goes with the little one over there. Um, if you look carefully, you'll be able to see where we had to um, break this image up into sec segments and re because we went from a very small image to a very big image. And there are limitations in our technologies and our machinery, so we had to work around all of that. Um, and this is on a piece of silk. This, we can pass around. This is a, an intaglio made from this plexiglass plate. So you can pass that around, you can feel it and touch it, and you can feel the line. Um, and the plexiglass, um, this then, I didn't bring one in, but I took this then and foiled it, and it became a foil image um, using the this printed image and plexiglass. Plexiglass also foils, so. <laughs> you were able to foil the printed image, or did you yeah. have to make a Xerox of it? No, failed the printed, okay. uh, foiled uh, by uh, applying the primer, and you'll see the primer is part of that process. Um, then it will accept the foil, and then one thing you might want to do is do stenciling, where you only foil portions mm -hmm. of, of an image. Um, and I should bring in, an, I'll, I'll bring in a finished one and show it to you so you can see what it looks like when you get all done. Um, and then around the corner we get bigger and more experimental. <laughs> so these are also foil works. This is hot stamp foil. Here's the butterfly that you saw the girl doing out um, in, the, in the video. And these wings are covered with text. Some of it you can read, some of it you can't read. Um, I didn't ever find out exactly if the text was shown, chosen on purpose or if it was just random, I don't know. Um, and then you can see on the back the bamboo structure of the original little kite. It was a kite with, with uh, so delicate all that, all that gold, coppery color is, is on silk. Is the foil. Yes, it's foiled silk. Oh, so, so this is done on silk, yeah. <laughs> um, this originally had paper wings, but they had disintegrated. And she chose to take it. It was a summer workshop, and she chose to do that, which I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> Can it still fly? Or is oh, it you, you have to do this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, but I mean, no, not really fly, no. It's you not like a kite. Though. No, okay. it, it doesn't work as a kite. It didn't ever work as a kite, oh, actually. Okay. <laughs> um, but it was a cool idea. <laughs> um, so this is silk again, and you can see this is somewhat related to that other big one in the corner. This is graphite. This has, uh, this was adhered to paper, and you can come under here and take a look. Uh, the paper is still stuck on the back of the silk. After I finished doing it, I tried to remove the paper. Um, it didn't come off. And then I thought, that's much better than if I had left the paper on. So, see? <laughs> you can't do anything wrong. You just have to think how to use it. So, um, and again, this is one of the things that if, if it were in a room where people could walk around, it would move, which was one of my ideas, and I still really want to do that, to hang a room full of things where you would animate them. Um, and then behind you is the tree. Um, this tree, as you can see, when I started to draw it, it was this size of a piece of paper, but I, 
I realized that that wasn't big enough for the drawing that was growing on there. So I added another piece of paper and another piece of paper. Uh, and when I got up to the top of the tree, I finally stopped. <laughs> but um, it is backed uh, by canvas. It's glued to canvas so that it is actually pretty sturdy. But it's a graphite drawing with foil. And the other pieces on the table out there are the foil used again, because you'll see that when you take the foil off, if you're using something like the graphite drawing, it, it doesn't all stick, and you have this cool leftover. So I made a series of, of pieces using the bark <laughs> of this tree. Um, I have never seen this tree vertical. Uh, most places it has to lay like a dead tree on the ground, because nobody has. Uh, how, Bob, how did you measure it? No. It's about 15 feet or more. Mm -hmm. Nobody has a room that big. <laughs> well, I can tell you from the floor to the ceiling is 10 feet. 10 feet. So I think it's more than 15. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so I've never seen it upright. But again, my idea is to build a forest and have people come and walk around in the forest. Um, just very quickly, this uh, is another graphic drawing that was used to make this image. Um, and then, um, actually, I ran into a problem in that some of the paper was pulling away, so I thought, well, let's do that on purpose. So I foiled a piece of silk and put it behind this drawing and began to open up all of the places where there were leaves, um, which took care of the problem of tearing the paper. But it also made, uh, I thought, a nice picture. <laughs> Is that all done in foil on the fronts? Uh, e mm, yes, it is. Okay. Um, this was like a monoprint, and then it's been foiled, and then it's had the foiled silk from the back side. Cool. So it's two sided, is what essentially. Um, this. This one is also interesting. I started working on this one. You see that you can see. Now this is a monoprint, but on the back I have adhered an iridescent uh, holographic foil so that, again, if this moves, you can see that the leaves are animated by the reflected and refracted light, which is why I... So are these holes then... Uh they were created when you did the foiling? Um, when the I did the monoprint, these came out as blobs. So I just continued to cut them. Oh. And so they were like these blobs. Uh -huh. So I just cut the blobs off and made a hole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so instead of going for a textural surface on this side, I decided to mine it instead of to <laughs> build it. Um, it, it was it was a fun experiment.